Chapter 511 Stay Away Gunning didn't move other parts of the car but immediately took out a power crystal and put it into Tang Yanfan's mouth. At the same time, she held his hand to put her power into his body. Actually, if Gunning was able to put her power into Tang Yanfan's body there was no need for him to take the power crystal. However, there were so many people around. If they noticed that Tang Yanfan recovered soon after Gunning held his hand for a while, it would cause unnecessary sensation and trouble. Some people saw Gunning put something into the injured person's mouth, and they were worried that it might harm the injured person, but none of them said anything. Quain Minkai didn't cut the line with Tang Yun Fan, so when he heard the sound of Gunning removing the car door, he raised his voice and asked, Hey, can anybody there hear me? Gunning had acute hearing and noticed the phone lying at the foot of the back seat. She used her free hand to touch its screen, and saw Quain Minkai's name. Mr. Quain, I'm Gunning. Uncle Tang had a car accident and I'm rescuing him now. I know that you're worried but he'll be fine. I'll call you back later. Gunning picked the phone up and said, Great. Hearing Gunning's voice, Quain Minkai was somewhat relieved. He believed that Tang Yunfan would be fine as long as Gunning was by his side. Of course, he was still slightly concerned about Tang Yun Fan's condition. I'm heading to the airport right now and I'll be city f around 6.30 p.m., Quain Minkai said. Great, please don't tell Grandpa Tang and the other family members in case they'll be too worried, Gunning said. Quain Minkai agreed, then they both hung up. Within two minutes an ambulance and the police arrived. The leading man of the hospital crew was an Gweng Ming, and Kian's father, who was the director of the central hospital in City F, while the leading man who came here with the police was Yu An Jai Song. Seeing that someone damaged the accident scene, they were all displeased. Hey, what are you doing? Don't you know that you've damaged the accident scene? A policeman shouted at Gunning and was about to pull her out. However, before he could tough Gunning, Gunning opened her mouth. Stay away. She sounded cold and unstoppable and the policeman was struck dumb for a second, standing still. Hearing her voice, Yuan Jai Song recognized that she was Gunning, so he stopped the policeman. T hesitation. Let's stay away from her now. We can get the driver out first. The rest of the people then went to move the driver out of the car. The policeman was still a little displeased. But he had to follow Yu An Jai Song's order. Hearing Yu An Jai Song's voice, Gunning knew that he came here too, but she was still focused on putting her power into Tang Yun Fan's body. Yu An Jai Song understood that Gunning was rescuing the injured man, so he didn't go ahead or interrupt her. Mr. Yu An and Gwing Ming looked to Yu An Jai Song with doubts. He didn't understand why Yu An Jai Song would allow a young girl to move the injured person in the car, it could be dangerous. She's Gunning. Yuan Jai Song said in a quiet voice. Hearing that, and Gwing Ming was surprised. He didn't expect that this young girl in his sight was Gunning, and he couldn't be more familiar with that name. Although he hadn't attended Su Anya's birthday party, he had heard about what had happened that day, so Gunning left a good impression on him. He was a famous doctor. Although he didn't quite believe in Gunning's special medicine, he was always curious about it. He also wanted to contact Gunning and study her special medicine, but didn't know how. He had asked Lan Yubin but Lan Yubin refused to give him Gunning's phone number without her permission. Since he met Gunning in person now, he was excited and curious to see whether she was able to cure the injured person. And Gwing Ming didn't know that An Gyan and Gunning were close friends, and he had no idea about the relationship between his younger brother, An Gwen Yao, and Gunning. If he had known that, he would have successfully contacted Gunning. If An Gwing Ming found it out later, he would be very upset because if he had found it out earlier, he wouldn't have been so fretful for these past days. With Yu An Jai Song's protection, nobody interrupted Gunning. However, no matter how much power was put into Tang Yun Fan's body by Gunning, he was still unconscious even though he already stopped bleeding and his wounds were healed. Gunning frowned. Why? Not knowing the reason, Gunning kept putting her power into Tang Yun Fan's body trying to wake him up. However, she was losing her power in a large amount and her face turned pale while Tang Yun Fan was still unconscious. Gunning had to draw her hand back and tried to move Tang Yun Fan's body out of the car. Seeing that, Yuan Jai Song walked ahead and said, Girl Gu, let the police do it. Yuan Jai Song didn't think that Gunning, 
who was just a young girl, would be able to move a grown-up man from a seriously damaged car, thanks, I can do it alone, Gunning said, although she had consumed a lot of her power, she was still strong enough to move Tang Yunfan out of the car, Yuan Jisong wanted to say something else but Tang Yunfan was moved out by Gunning at this moment, which shocked him, everyone around was also astonished by Gunning's strength once more, Gunning then picked Tang Yunfan's mobile phone up and left the car, girl Gu, how's the injured person? Yuan Jisong asked, the wounds are mostly healed, but he's still unconscious, let's send him to the hospital now. Gunning said that to both Yuan Jisong and Quen Ming Kai, hearing that Tang Yan Fan was safe now, Quen Ming Kai was relieved, hurry up, move this injured man to the ambulance right now. Yuan Jisong gave an order, and a group of people immediately came to move Tang Yan Fan to an ambulance. In the meantime, Gunning talked to Quen Ming Kai for a short while and hung up again. Seeing that Gunning's face was very pale, Yuan Jisong asked worriedly, Girl Gu, are you alright? You don't look very well. I'm fine, I just lost a lot of strength. Gunning smiled, hearing that, Yuan Jisong was relieved. Miss Gu, nice to meet you, I'm the director of the central hospital, and Gwing Ming came over saying to Gunning politely. Gunning smiled and replied, nice to meet you too. Director An, I heard that you're An Kian's father, Chapter 512 finally meet each other. You know An Kian? And Gwing Ming was greatly surprised. Yes, we're close friends. Gunning smiled, and Gwing Ming took a long breath in. It was really shocking news for him. Uncle Yuan, I'm afraid that I can't drive now. Can you arrange someone to drive me to the hospital? We can use the ambulance stopped there. Gunning said, she was worried about Tang Yunfan, so she decided to follow him to the hospital. No problem, I can drive you there, Yuan Jisong said. He didn't ask her why she wanted to use the ambulance instead of his private car. After that, Yuan Jisong followed Gunning, getting into the ambulance, and Gwing Ming was eager to ask Gunning about her special medicine. But obviously it wasn't the right time now, and Gwing Ming came here with the ambulance so he naturally went back to the hospital with the ambulance too, but he sat in the front, while Gunning stayed in the back by Tang Yan Fan's side. Before long, they arrived at the hospital, and Gwing Ming had arranged a VIP patient room beforehand. Although he didn't know the injured person's identity, he knew that the man had to be very important since Yuan Jai Song had informed him in person. Miss Gu, do you know him? Seeing that Gunning accompanied the injured man along the way, and Gwing Ming was curious. Yes. Gunning said, but didn't give any details, and Gwing Ming also stopped asking. After they arrived at the hospital, a doctor instantly conducted a checkup on Tang Yun Fan. Girl Gu, you can have a rest at home now. It must have been a long day for you, Yuan Jai Song said. Thanks. I'll stay here, Gunning said. Yuan Jai Song was surprised. Do you know him? If not, there was no reason for her to stay here. Yes. Gunning simply said, although Yuan Jai Song was curious, he didn't ask further. He wasn't clear about the injured man's identity yet, but he was sure that the man had to be a senior manager of the Tang Wang group. To his astonishment, Gunning was able to meet a senior manager of the Tang Wang group. The more familiar Yuan Jai Song was with Gunning, the more he was surprised by her. The exam result was out a few minutes later and the doctor said that Tang Yan Fan was fine and would wake up in several hours. Gunning, on the other hand, didn't think that it was that easy. They had no idea that there was already a lot of magical power in Tang Yan Fan's body now, and he should have woken up right away. However, he was still unconscious. Gunning was confused but all she could do now was to wait until Tang Yun Fan woke up, hearing that the injured man was fine, Yuan Jai Song was relieved, after that, Yuan Jai Song called Quen Ming Kai at once to tell him, that everything was fine, Quen Ming Kai was on the plane when Yuan Jai Song called him, and his phone was turned off, so he missed Yuan Jai Song's call, the patient needed rest and quiet so and Gwing Ming left with the other doctors, leaving Gunning and Yuan Jai Song in the patient room. Gunning didn't want to leave now, so she asked Yuan Jai Song to send the principal's car back to her school. Yuan Jai Song agreed without hesitation and told his secretary to do that. Yuan Jai Song was going to attend a meeting soon, so he left and told Gunning that he would come again in the evening. After Yuan Jai Song was gone, 
Ganing gave Tang Yanfen a glance and thought for a while, then made up her mind and called Gu Man. When Gu Man answered Ganing's call, she was in a taxi with Ganing and Wang Xufen. They were on their way to find a new apartment for Wang Xufen. Hi, Ning Ning, aren't you supposed to have your classes now? Why are you calling me? Gu Man asked. Mom, he had a car accident and he's still unconscious. We're in the central hospital, Ganing said. What? Hearing that, Gu Man was shocked. In her memory, the man was killed in a car accident. They finally met each other after 18 years. But he had a car accident again. Was he going to abandon her once more? No, she wouldn't allow it to happen. Seeing that Gu Man was really scared, both Gu King and Wang Xufen didn't know what had happened. What's wrong? Gu King asked. I I'll be right there. Gu Man said she had no time to explain it to Gu King, but said to the taxi driver, please, go to the central hospital now. Sure. The taxi driver said, what happened? Gu King was a little nervous. Gu Man did her best to calm down, but her voice was still trembling. Mr. Tang had a car accident, and he's in the central hospital now. What? Gu King was also frightened. Although she had only met Tang Yunfan once, she knew that he was a good, reliable man, and she also had sympathy for him after hearing that he had a car accident. However, Gu King didn't understand why Gu Man seemed so scared and worried. When the principal of the number three high school received Yu An Jai Song's secretary's call, he walked out in a hurry. Seeing that his car was stopped in the parking lot, he was surprised and wondered why Gu Ning didn't tell him she was back. However, when he found out that it was Yu An Jai Song's secretary who drove the car back for Gu Ning, he was shocked, but soon figured it out. Gu Ning and Su Anya were close friends. And Yu An Jai Song was an old friend of Su Anya's father. It was understandable that Yu An Jai Song sent his secretary to drive the car back for Gu Ning. A dozen minutes later, Gu Man and the others arrived at the hospital. When Gu Man entered the hospital room, she was heartbroken to see the man lying on the bed unconscious, and she couldn't help but burst into tears. It had been 18 years, but he was still as handsome as he had been even though he had aged during these years. Chapter 513 Gumen's Feelings Before Gumen met Tang Yunfan, she had thought to herself thousands of times, wondering whether she would still love him or whether she would feel that he was very strange and their good old memories would be gone with the wind too. However, she felt her deep love for him painfully when she saw his face again, and she was sure that he was the only man she loved throughout this lifetime. Gu King didn't notice Gumen's reaction nor Tang Yunfan who was lying on the patient bed but turned to Ganing and asked, Ning Ning, how's Mr. Tang now? He's still alive and the doctor said that he'll wake up in several hours, Ganing said. Ganing didn't tell them many details, because it was too hard to explain. Hearing that, Gu King was relieved but Gu Man was still worried. Aunt, let's go have a seat in the living room. My mother needs some private time, Ganing said to Gu King. It was a VIP patient room, so there was also a living room, kitchen, and bathroom inside apart from a patient room. Wang Xufen didn't know their relationship, so she didn't think further, but Gu King was struck dumb for a second because she didn't understand why Gu Man needed some private time with Tang Yunfan. Nevertheless, Gu King didn't ask why but walked out of the patient room with Wang Xufen. Once they were out, Gu King asked Gu Ning at once, Ning Ning, why does your mother need some private time in there? Well, I think that you better ask my mother later, Gu Ning said because it was totally up to Gu Man how to handle it. Gu King opened her mouth, but closed it afterwards. Since Gu Ning said so, she better stay quiet now, but she was curious about the relationship between Gu Man and Mr. Tang. She wondered which one of them fell in love with the other first. Actually, Tang Yanfan had left a good impression on Gu King, because he was handsome, kind and reliable. If Gu Man could be together with him, Gu King would feel happy for her. However, was Gu Ning willing to have a stepfather? Even if Gu Ning was willing to accept Tang Yunfan, would Tang Yunfan treat Gu Ning well? There were so many questions on Gu King's mind now, but she knew that it wasn't the right time to ask them. Gu King really cared a lot about Gu Man and Gu Ning. In the patient room, Gu Man stood still for a long while before she went to sit at the bedside. She kept staring at Tang Yunfan's face trying to match his face with Ning. She was so nervous that she almost lost her breath. Ning, 
It has been 18 years, Gaman said gently with her voice trembling in tears. I thought that I would never see you again. I thought I would only see your face again in my dreams. Do you know how painful it was when I heard that you had a car accident? I'm so worried about you. Please, please open your eyes and look at me. Gaman talked to Tang Yun Fan for a long time with tears falling from her face but Tang Yun Fan couldn't hear it, nor see it. Gaman's voice wasn't loud, so Ga King and Wang Sufan didn't hear it clearly. They also had no idea that Gaman was crying, because she didn't cry out loud either. All of a sudden, Gunning received Yu Mixi's message. Yu Mixi had been anxious ever since Gunning had disappeared. Watching Gunning driving away, Yu Mixi didn't dare call her, so she sent her a message. Yu Mixi wanted to tell Muk and their other friends, but she decided to wait until Gunning replied to her. Yu Mixi, Ning Ning, what happened? Are you alright now? Please send a message back to me if you can. I'm worried about you. Gunning didn't realize that she hadn't told Yu Mixi anything until now. So she immediately sent a message back to her. Gunning, I am fine. Don't worry. I just got shocking news that my uncle had a car accident. So I was in a hurry to go to the hospital. Reading the message, Yu Mixi was finally relieved. She trusted Gunning. As long as Gunning said that she was fine, she would be fine. Their head teacher, Zhang Kua, was also concerned about Gunning. Zhang Kua found out that Gunning was absent in the second class and she then got to know that Gunning had run out of the classroom in a hurry. After getting Gunning's reply, Yu Mixi told Jiang Kua that Gunning was fine to calm her anxiety. Car accident again? Jiang Kua said to herself. Why are people by Gunning's side always caught in a car accident? The minute that Gunning put her mobile phone down, An Kian appeared. It was An Guingming who told her that Gunning was in the hospital now. And An Kian came here with a task. Hi, Dr. An. Ga King greeted An Kian once she came inside. Hi, An Kian. Gunning said. Without a doubt, it had to be An Guingming who told An Kian that she was here. I heard that you're here, so I came here to have a look, An Kian said. How's he now? He's still unconscious, Gunning said. He'll be awake sooner or later. Don't worry. An Kian comforted. Thanks. Gunning said. She also hoped that Tang Yunfan would wake up as soon as possible. Otherwise, not only Gumen and Gunning, but the Tang family would also be worried. Oh, Ning Ning, could you please do me a favor? An Kian suddenly said with embarrassment. Um, didn't you save Su Anya's life when we attended her birthday party last time? My father has been curious about your special medicine ever since he heard the story. Could you please sell a pill to him? She knew that the medicine was priceless, so she was willing to pay for it. I'm willing to give a pill to your father but I have to tell you the truth, it's impossible for others to know its formula, because it's my master's secret medicine, but she already passed away, so nobody else can figure its formula out, including me, Gunning said, half lying, half telling the truth. What? An Kian was surprised. Well, you can have a try. Gunning gave An Kian a small porcelain bottle with a power crystal inside. Chapter 514 Quain Ming Kai's arrival. It was impossible for them to figure out its formula, so Gunning was confident to set a high price for her special medicine. She also had no worries that others might abuse her medicine. Although An Kian believed Gunning, her father probably didn't and was determined to have a dry. Therefore, and Kian took the bottle. Thanks. Text your bank account to me and I'll transfer the money to you. No need. Take it as a gift from me to your father. Gunning said airily. What? And Kian was surprised. The pill cost a million yuan. However, Gunning didn't care. A million yuan was a lot of money for the Yun family, but An Kian's father who was a medical expert was very curious about it. No no, it costs a million yuan, so I can't take it for free. An Kian said, it's true that this pill is quite effective, but I got those pills without paying a cent myself. I don't rely on them to make money either, so you don't need to feel guilty at all. If you want to pay me back, you can let my uncle stay in the hospital for free instead, Gunning said. Well An Kian still felt a little guilty. All right, we're good friends after all, Gunning said, and pretended to be displeased. If you reject me once more. I'll take it back. An Kian opened her mouth, but didn't say another word to reject Gunning. It was impossible for her to go back home with empty hands, because her father would be furious. Thank you so much. An Kian said, please allow me to buy you a meal when you're free. No problem. 
Gunning agreed, and Qian left afterwards. Gunning told Ge King and Wang Xufen that they could leave if they felt tired, but they were worried about Ge Man, so neither of them were willing to leave right now. After a long while, Ge Man was still in the patient room. It wasn't early, so Gunning told Ge King to buy some food for them. Wang Xufen followed Ge King outside. Ge Man alone stayed in the patient room for nearly an hour before she calmed herself down and went out. She seemed haggard with swollen. Red eyes after crying in worry about Tang Yunfan, Gunning immediately poured a glass of water for Guman, and secretly put a power crystal inside. With the help of the power crystal, Guman felt much better after, and her swollen, red eyes soon went back to normal. Ning Ning, does his family know that he had a car accident? Guman asked. Not yet, but his secretary knows and is on his way here. Gunning said. Guman nodded and stopped asking. Instead, she sat aside with an absent look. I asked aunt to buy some food for us. Do you want to go back home after eating or stay here to keep him company? Gunning asked. Actually, she already knew Guman's answer. I'll stay here. Guman said without hesitation. Tang Yanfan was still unconscious, and she couldn't sleep soundly if he was in danger. Before long, Ge King and Wang Xufan were back. After the meal, it was already past 6 p.m. Gunning then told Ge King and Wang Xufen to go back home and that she would stay here with Gu Man. Ge King was really curious about the relationship between Gu Man and the man, but she decided to wait to ask until Gu Man was home. Gu Man gave Wang Xufen the key to her home because she trusted Wang Xufen. Ge King wasn't able to see Tang Yanfan's face or she wouldn't have been so calm because Gunning closely resembled Tang Yunfan. When Ge King and Wang Xufen had just left, and Guingming walked inside, he came here to see whether Gunning needed help. Although he was eager to ask her about the medicine, he knew that it wasn't the right time, so he didn't mention it. Before An Guingming went off duty, he repeatedly thanked Gunning for sending him the pill as a gift. Around 6.30 p.m., Tang Yunfan's phone rang and the caller was Quain Ming Kai. Gunning directly picked it up. Miss Gu, how is Chairman Tang now? Once Gunning answered the phone, Quain Ming Kai asked her anxiously. He's fine now but still unconscious, Gunning said. I'm in City F now, and I'll be right there, Quain Ming Kai said. Great, Gunning said, then hung up. Half an hour later, Quain Ming Kai arrived. Nice to meet you, Miss Gu. Quain Ming Kai greeted Gunning politely because he knew that she was Tang Yanfan's biological daughter. Only Tang Yanfan and he knew the secret in the Tang family right now, but he had respect for Gunning because of her real identity. In addition, he didn't know whether Gunning had found out about her own real identity yet, so he still called her Miss Gu. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Quain. Gunning greeted him. Quain Ming Kai used to think that only Tang Yanfan and him knew the secret that Gunning was Tang Yanfan's biological daughter. But he changed his mind when he saw Gu Man. He had seen Gu Man's picture, so he recognized her face when she appeared in his sight. Since Gu Man was here she must have met Tang Yunfan, and she had surely recognized him. Even though they hadn't met each other for 18 years, Tang Yunfan's appearance didn't change a lot. However, Quain Ming Kai wasn't very certain about it, because 18 years wasn't a short time. However, if Gu Man hadn't recognized Tang Yunfan, she wouldn't have been so sad and worried. Anyway, although Quain Ming Kai believed that Gu Man had already recognized Tang Yun Fan, he decided to pretend that he didn't know, because the two hadn't accepted each other as family yet. I bet you must be Miss Gu's mother, madam. He asked politely. Gunning noticed Quain Ming Kai's unusual reaction when he saw Gu Man, so she guessed that he knew Gu Man but pretended that he didn't. Yes, this is my mother, Gu Man. Gunning introduced. Mom, this is Mr. Quain. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. They greeted one another, then walked to the patient room together. Seeing Tang Yanfan unconscious, Quain Ming Kai didn't know what to do. Miss Gu, thank you so much. If it hadn't been for you, the situation could be worse, Quain Ming Kai said to Gunning seriously. No matter whether Gunning knew that Tang Yanfan was her biological father, as Tang Yanfan's secretary, Quain Ming Kai ought to thank her on behalf of his boss. Chapter 515 Twists of Fate My pleasure, Gunning said. She didn't think that she had done Tang Yunfan a big favor. 
but believed that it was something that she had to do. Tang Yanfan was her biological father after all and nothing was more important than saving her biological father's life. A dozen minutes later, Yu An Jai Song arrived. When he met Queen Ming Kai, he greeted Queen Ming Kai with great respect. The Tang family was a super powerful family whether in politics or in business in the country. They were as powerful as the four most influential families in the capital so nobody dared to annoy them. Although Queen Ming Kai was only Tang Yanfan's secretary, he was still a more important figure than the secretary of the municipal party committee from a third-tier city. Secretary Yuan, thank you for your help. Queen Ming Kai didn't show any arrogance and was very polite. After all, he was the one who had turned to Yuan Jai Song for help. However, to his surprise, Gunning had appeared at the accident scene. It's my pleasure to help. And actually Golga did most of it. Yuan Jisong told the truth. It was a serious car accident, and the driver was badly injured, let alone Tang Yunfan who had sat in the back. The rear part of the car had been squeezed out of shape, and half of Tang Yunfan's body was tightly pressed by the car. It was impossible that he was just slightly injured. However, when Tang Yunfan was sent to the hospital, all he had were minor injuries. Others thought that it must be a miracle but Yuan Jai Song believed that it had to be because of Gunning's help. Secretary Yuan, both you and Miss Ge have helped us a lot. Thank you so much. Queen Ming Kai thanked them again. Yuan Jai Song was very curious about the injured man's identity. Why did Queen Ming Kai come to visit him in person? Yuan Jai Song didn't know the answer but he understood that the injured man had to be an important figure. Normally. Tang Yanfan should have woken up after two hours. However, four hours had passed, and he was still unconscious. Everyone was concerned about him but none of them could do anything about it. All they could do now was wait. Since Gwen Ming Kai was here, Gunning and Gumen went back home later. Gumen and Tang Yanfan hadn't accepted each other as family yet, so it was inappropriate for Gumen to stay there for the night. Before they left, Gunning reminded Queen Ming Kai to call her if Tang Yanfan woke up no matter how late it was. Mom, don't worry, he'll be fine. Seeing Gumen so sad, Gunning comforted her. In order to calm Gunning's concern, Gumen forced a smile and said, Sure, he'll be fine. Gunning understood that Gumen was in a terrible mood but she could do nothing about it. Precisely because Gumen was still in love with him, she felt very hurt when he was in danger. When they were finally home, it was only 9 p.m. Gu King and Wang Xufen were sitting in the living room, waiting for Gu Man. Man, is Mr. Tang awake? Once Gu Man was back, Gu King asked with concern. Not yet, Gu Man replied. Man, Gu King hesitated, but still asked, has anything happened between you and Mr. Tang? She was Gu Man's older sister and she was worried about Gu Man. Of course, if Gu Man wasn't willing to tell her. She wouldn't continue to ask. Given all the things that had happened, Gaman decided to tell Ga King the truth. Well, he he is Ning Ning's biological father. What? Hearing that, Ga King abruptly stood up from the sofa in great shock. Mr. Tang is Ning Ning's biological father, isn't he dead already? Ga King blurted it out without a second thought, and immediately regretted it when she said it aloud. Tang Yan Fan was still unconscious after all. And it wasn't right to say that now. Wang Xufen was Guman's good friend, so she knew about Guman's history, and also felt astonished after hearing the news. Then why hasn't he found or visited you at all throughout the past 18 years? Why did he suddenly appear now? The king was slightly blaming Tang Yan Fan. He had a car accident back then and lost the memory of the year when we were together, so he never found or visited me. A while ago, he met Ning Ning. And Ning Ning got his attention because Ning Ning closely resembles him. After investigation, he's sure that Ning Ning is his biological daughter. However, he still failed to get his memory back, Gu Man said and sounded very sad. Hearing that, Gu King stopped blaming Tang Yan Fan. So what's your plan now? Gu King asked. Is he still single, or is he married? If he was married, Gu Man couldn't be together with him anymore. But if he was still single, there was a chance that they could be together again. He stayed single the entire time. Although he lost the memory of the year when he was with my mother, he still had a vague image of my mother in his mind, and couldn't accept another woman, Gunning said. Ever since he found out that my mother and I are his family, he has been trying to take responsibility as a husband and father. 
He came to City F this time precisely for the purpose of meeting my mother face to face. Unexpectedly, he was caught in a car accident again, on his way after leaving the airport. Twists of fate. Wang Xufen said. Indeed, 18 years ago, a car accident had set them apart and made Guman believe that he was already dead, and a car accident stopped them from meeting each other again 18 years later. How about you? Are you willing to be together with him again? Gu King asked. I, I have no idea. Gu Man didn't have a clear mind now. Although she still loved Tang Yunfan they had been apart for 18 years after all, and it was unavoidable that they felt a little strange towards one another. Besides, he couldn't remember her now, and it was hard to tell what would happen in the future. Everything was unpredictable now. Since Gu Man hadn't made up her mind yet, Gu King stopped asking. However, if Guman hesitated, it proved that she was still in love with Tang Yunfan. Upon thinking that Guman had raised her child alone for the past 18 years, Gu King's heart ached for her younger sister. She had also believed that Guman should marry again, but Guman refused to marry again to protect Gu Ning. A stepfather wasn't a biological father after all, and Guman was worried that her daughter wouldn't be treated with real care. Nevertheless, things were different now. Ning Ning, what do you think? Gu King asked Gu Ning, Chapter 516 Tang Yun Fan is moved back to City B. Gu Ning understood Gu King's concern about Gu Man. She smiled and said, If my mother is willing to marry again I will, of course, be supportive. I have always hoped that my mother could find a reliable man to spend the rest of her life happily. I'm going to study in the capital soon after all and I won't have much time to keep my mother company. I don't want her to be lonely. Hearing that. Gu King was relieved and felt comforted because Gu Ning was a considerate daughter. When they were free, Gu Ning called Jiang Qiu and asked for another day off. That night, Gu Man didn't have any sleep but was thinking about Tang Yunfan the entire time. At the same time, Gu Ning didn't receive the news that Tang Yunfan woke up either, which was above and also below her expectations. Although she had the strange feeling that Tang Yunfan wouldn't wake up easily she didn't know why because she had already done her best to cure him. Gu Ning was worried about him. What they didn't know was that Tang Yun Fan actually fell into a deep dream in which he went back to a certain day 19 years ago. It was a summer vacation, Tang Yun Fan along with his two friends came to City D for sightseeing. However, to his astonishment, his two friends had a scheme to kill him here and he was badly injured during the fight. He had no idea how long he had fled and finally fell down on the ground when he was out of strength. When he woke up again, he was in a hospital with a beautiful young woman by his side. In addition, he didn't remember anything, so he followed the beautiful young woman all the time because he knew that she had saved his life and wouldn't hurt him. The next day, Guman looked extremely haggard with dark circles under her eyes. It was quite obvious that she had stayed up all night. Gunning poured a glass of water for her as usual and secretly put a power crystal inside. After drinking the water, Guman went back to normal. Gunning didn't go to school today, but went to the hospital with Guman. Tang Yan Fan was still unconscious since yesterday afternoon, so Queen Ming Kai was deeply concerned. It's been a long time but he's still unconscious. It's very weird, because the doctor said that his body is fine now, Quain Ming Kai said with concern when Gu Ning and Gu Man arrived. Exactly because Tang Yun Fan was still unconscious even though his body was fine already, everyone was worried about him. If they couldn't figure out the reason, they had no idea how to wake him up. Facing the problem, Gu Ning really didn't know what to do either. Let's wait for another day. Gunning said. That was all they could do now. Nevertheless, another day passed but Tang Yan Fan still didn't wake up and Quain Ming Kai couldn't tolerate it anymore. Miss Gu, I'm sorry. I think it's time to tell the Tang family. They hadn't told the Tang family before because they didn't want them to be worried, and thought that Tang Yan Fan would wake up soon. However, it had been two days but there was still no sign that he was going to wake up. So Quain Ming Kai thought that it was time to tell the Tang family right now. If he still kept it a secret, he couldn't bear the result if anything terrible happened to Tang Yan Fan again. Gu Ning thought for a while then agreed. Well, of course, you should call them now but please don't tell Grandpa Tang right now. He's too old to accept such terrible news. I don't want him to be in danger too. Quain Ming Kai agreed. So he directly called Tang Yunhang. When Tang Yunhang heard the news, 
he was shocked and immediately sent a private jet to pick Tang Yunfan up. He didn't send a helicopter because it was slower than a private jet. That being the case, they had to get to the airport in two and a half hours. Since they hadn't accepted each other as family yet, Gunning and Guman could only see Tang Yunfan being taken away before their own eyes. Before Tang Yunfan was moved back to City B, Gunning took out a bottle with 20 power crystals inside and gave it to Queen Ming Kai. She told Queen Ming Kai to help Tang Yunfan take a pill every three days if Tang Yunfan still wouldn't wake up. The pill would melt once it was put in his mouth, so it wouldn't cause any problems even if Tang Yunfan was still unconscious. Gunning also reminded Queen Ming Kai to call her if anything bad happened to Tang Yunfan and she would come to him as fast as she could. Moreover, if Tang Haifeng felt uncomfortable after hearing the news about Tang Yunfan, he could take a pill too. Queen Ming Kai, of course, trusted Gunning, and he took the bottle right away. Gunning turned to An Guingming for an ambulance to send Tang Yunfan to the airport. An Guingming then told Yu An Jai Song that Tang Yunfan was being moved back to City B now. So Yu An Jai Song came to the hospital in a hurry. When Yu An Jai Song arrived, Queen Ming Kai's group hadn't left yet because the private jet would only land at the airport after two and a half hours, so they had decided to wait at the hospital for now. Mr. Quain, I heard that you are going back to City B. Yu An Jai Song asked. Yes, he's still unconscious and it'll be more convenient in City B, Quain Ming Kai said. He didn't expose Tang Yan Fan's real identity. Two hours later, Gunning and Gu Man along with Queen Ming Kai sent Tang Yan Fan to the airport in an ambulance arranged by the hospital. Along the way, Gu Man's sight fell on Tang Yan Fan all the time. She felt so sad and hurt, but had to swallow her feelings because she didn't want others to find out. However, Gunning and Queen Ming Kai were still able to notice her unusual reactions. Gunning didn't say anything because she could do nothing about it. Queen Ming Kai didn't say a word either, although he had deep sympathy for Gu Man. He was an outsider after all. Twenty minutes later, they arrived at the airport. It was all arranged well, so the ambulance went directly through the VIP passage heading to where the private jet landed. The private jet had already landed a few minutes ago, so there were four people waiting for them when they arrived. Gu Man didn't know that Tang Yunfan was being moved back to City B by a private jet. So she was very surprised when she saw it. He must be an important figure to use a private jet. Guman thought to herself. No matter what, Tang Yunfan left an unforgettable impression on her now. The ambulance stopped in front of the private jet. Once the car door was open, some people immediately walked forward and helped them push Tang Yunfan into the private jet. Before the private jet took off, Queen Ming Kai said to Ganing and Guman, Thank you so much for your kindness. Keep in touch. Of course. Gunning said. After that, Queen Ming Kai turned around, getting aboard. Gunning and Gu Man didn't walk away until the private jet disappeared from their sight. However, when they went back to the ambulance, Gu Man suddenly collapsed to the ground. Luckily, Gunning was by her side and supported her on time. Mom. Gunning was a little scared and instantly put her power into Gu Man's body. Miss Gu. Shall we take your mother back to the hospital for a check? The driver asked with concern. Thanks. I'm fine. I'm just a little tired. Let's go back home now. Guman forced a smile. Thank you so much, but please send us to Fengwil Uxionary Mansion, Guning said. As long as she was there Guman would be fine. Chapter 517 Why did Yunfan go to City F? No problem. Since they said so. The driver didn't insist. With the help of Gunning's magical power, Guman's body was fine but she was still in a bad mood. When they got home, it was already 5 p.m. and Wang Xufen was cooking for them. Hi, welcome home. Wang Xufen walked out of the kitchen when she heard the sound of the door opening. I found a new apartment today and I'll move in tonight. Thank you so much for letting me stay with you these past two days. You're moving into a new apartment tonight? Guman was surprised. Well, you don't need to rush, and we're more than willing to help you. Wang Xufen understood that Guman was always kind and generous but she still preferred to rely on herself. Oh, where is your new apartment? Guman asked. Not far from the beauty salon, Wang Xufen said. Is it safe there? Guman asked. Yes, only tenants have keys, Wang Xufen said. Sounds great. Guman said when they were home. 
Gunning was finally free to call Yu An Jai Song and asked him about the truck driver. Since it was totally an accident, we settled the case according to the law and I already told Mr. Quinn the details, Yu An Jai Song said. Great. Gunning said. When they had dinner later, they invited Gu King's family to join them. Once Gu King walked in, she asked Gu Man, Man, how's Mr. Tang right now? Gu King wasn't aware that Tang Yunfan had already been moved back to City B. He's still unconscious, and his family already moved him back to City B this afternoon, Gu Man said and she seemed upset. What? He was moved back to City B. Gu King was surprised and worried. If Tang Yunfan was moved back to City B, what would Guman do now? He's still unconscious and there is nothing I can do. Guman was a little fretful. It did not matter whether she could be with Tang Yun Fan, she just hoped that he would wake up and be safe. The king then realized that Tang Yun Fan's health was the most important thing now. Guman wasn't in a good mood, and lost her appetite, so she didn't eat much during dinner. After the meal, Guning drove Wang Xufan to her newly rented apartment, while Gu King stayed to comfort Gu Man. In the Tang family's house, City B. In the afternoon, Tang Yunhang called Tang Yunrong and her husband and told them to come to the Tang family's house tonight, but didn't tell them any details. Therefore, around 6 pm, Tang Yunrong and her husband arrived at the Tang family's house. Except for Tang Yunhang, no one else knew what had happened but Tang Yunhang refused to tell them details until Tang Yunfan was home, so they all had to wait with patience. After dinner, they were chatting in the living room watching TV shows. Tang Yunhang told them that Tang Yunfan would be home around 8 pm and they were all waiting. Around 7.30 pm, the Tang family's private jet landed at the airport of City B. A group of people got out of the plane and directly got into MPV heading to the Tang family's house. The Tang family had their own private doctors who were all internationally well-known experts, and there was also a medical room equipped with a full set of medical devices in the Tang family's house. Therefore, they didn't need to go to the hospital but went straight back to the Tang family's house. In addition, Tang Yunfan was a very important figure. If he was admitted in the hospital, the news that he was unconscious would soon spread abroad, which was a good chance for his enemies to attack him. The Tang family was the number one family in City B and not many people dared to annoy them, but they also had many enemies in politics and business, so they had to keep it a secret that Tang Yunfan was unconscious. Tang Yunfan was the only person in the Tang family who was able to run such a large family business now because Tang Haifeng was too old while Tang Jiang was too young. Besides, Tang Jiang was studying abroad. Even if he came back home to take over the family business under emergency, he didn't have much experience nor the ability to handle the dangerous situation. In that case, the Tang family had to do their best to solve the crisis. At the same time, Tang Yunfan's condition was very unusual because his body was fine but he was still unconscious. Even if he was admitted to the hospital, the result would be the same. If Tang Yunfan was in a bad condition, they would of course send him to the hospital. Around 8 pm, Tang Yunfan was finally home but he was moved inside in a stretcher, which shocked everyone in the Tang family, especially Master Tang, who almost fell when he saw the scene. Luckily, the housekeeper supported him on time, but he still breathed hard and felt utterly uncomfortable. Seeing that, Quain Ming Kai immediately took out a power crystal helping Tang Haifeng take it, and Tang Haifeng soon got better. Although Quain Ming Kai trusted Gunning, he had never seen the unbelievable effect of the pill with his own eyes before, so he was quite surprised when Tang Haifeng soon got better after taking the pill. What what has happened? Kao Ruiwu asked the minute he recovered from the shock. Let's go to the medical room first. Tang Yunhang said then told them to move Tang Yunfan to the medical room right away where doctors were already waiting for them. Afterwards, they all quickly walked to the medical room. When they arrived, they carefully put Tang Yunfan on the patient bed, and the doctors administered an examination at once. Tang Haifeng couldn't wait and asked Quain Ming Kai in anxiety, Ming Kai, what happened? Lord Tang had a car accident. But all he has on his body now are minor injuries but somehow he's still unconscious, Quain Ming Kai said. Hearing that, everyone was astonished. A car accident. Where and when? Why didn't you tell us before? Tang Haifeng questioned in anger and worry. Although Tang Haifeng was an old man now, he was still a well-respected, 
successful businessman, so Kuen Ming Kai felt extremely stressed. Well, Lord Tang went to City F yesterday and was in a car accident around 3 p.m. while he was leaving the airport. After the medical check, Lord Tang only had minor injuries and his body was in a normal condition so I didn't inform the Tang family right away, because I thought that Lord Tang would be awake soon. However, Lord Tang has been unconscious for two days, so I called Lord Yunhang, Gwen Minkai explained. City F? Why did Yunfan go to City F? We don't have any businesses in City F after all, Tang Yunhang asked with confusion. Chapter 518 Lin Lijuan beats the mistress. Well Queen Mink I didn't know how to explain it. At that moment, the doctor finished the medical check. Except for some minor injuries, Lord Tang is fine. I can't find the reason why he's still unconscious either. His body was in good condition, but he was still unconscious which wasn't good news because nobody knew how to cure him if they couldn't find the reason. Well, why don't we call Golga now? Tang Haifeng suddenly thought of Gunning. He took out his phone and was about to call Gunning. Gunning must know how to wake Yan Fan up. He thought to himself. Tang Haifeng placed his complete trust in Gunning. He believed that if Gunning was able to cure his heart disease, it would be easy for her to cure Tang Yan Fan. However, when he just took out his phone, Quain Minkai interrupted him. Master Tang. Miska has already checked Lord Tang's body but she doesn't know the reason either. What? Golga has already checked Yan Fan's body? Everyone was surprised, but nobody asked Queen Minkai how Gunning met Tang Yan Fan, because they were all shocked by the news that even Gunning didn't know the reason why Tang Yan Fan was still unconscious. If Golga doesn't know the reason, who else could find it? Tang Haifeng was extremely disappointed, and almost fell on the ground. Luckily, the housekeeper supported him on time. In City F, on the way Gunning went back after she sent Wang Xufen home, the traffic was a little heavy on the road, so she looked around to kill time. All of a sudden, she noticed that there were a lot of people crowded at the roadside. It seemed that two women were fighting amid the crowd. Gunning wasn't interested in watching fights, but she had a burning curiosity now after she recognized the two women who were in the fight. They were precisely Lin Lijuan and Ge Kingxian's secretary, Liu Yuwei. Ge Kingxian was also there. Seeing that, Gunning immediately stopped that car by the roadside and watched the drama from the car. Gunning stopped near, so she was able to hear their conversations clearly. Liu Yuwei was a slim, young girl, and she obviously couldn't beat Lin Lijuan in a fight. Moreover, Lin Lijuan had Jin Langxin as her helper, while Ge Kingxian was stopped by a middle-aged man, so he wasn't able to help Liu Yuwei. In that case, Lin Lijuan and Jin Langxin had already slapped Liu Yuwei many times. As a result, Liu Yuwei's face was obviously swollen, and her hair, as well as her clothes were in a mess. Lin Lijuan was also injured with several scratches on her face during the fight with Liu Yuwei. However, she didn't feel the pain at all right now, because she was in a rage. The middle-aged man who stopped Ge Kingxian was Lin Lijuan's older brother, Lin Di King. Without a doubt, Lin Lijuan was fully prepared for today's fight. In fact, Lin Lijuan had prepared well for it. Jin Langxin was the one who discovered the adultery. Her younger sister lived in the same living area as Liu Yuwei and they coincidentally lived in the same building. Last night. When Jin Langxin left her younger sister's place and went to the parking lot, she saw Ge Kingxian's car stop right next to hers. There was a woman in Ge Kingxian's car, and the woman was precisely Liu Yuwei. Although Jin Langxin wasn't sure about their relationship, she had the instinct that it couldn't be simple. Jin Langxin was right. Ge Kingxian and Liu Yuwei didn't get out of the car at once, but kissed each other inside. Seeing the scene. Jin Langxin was shocked and took a video of them without hesitation. She knew that men loved adultery, but they were very bold to do that right in the car in a public parking lot. Jin Langxin hated adultery very much. She didn't even trust her own husband's loyalty, but she hadn't gotten any evidence yet, so she remained quiet for now. However, since she had already witnessed the scene, she would definitely tell Lin Lijuan because she was Lin Lijuan's good friend. Liu Yuwei had stayed in the car with Ge Kingxian for half an hour, then she got out of the car, walking upstairs. Jin Langxin didn't call Lin Lijuan until the next day, 
because she was worried that Lin Lijuan would lose control of herself and wouldn't get any benefit from this mess. Therefore, Jin Langxin met Lin Lijuan in her place the next day before she told Lin Lijuan everything. Lin Lijuan had a quick temper. Once she heard it, she was so mad that she wanted to fight with the Kingxian right away in his company, but she was stopped by Jin Langxin because it wouldn't do her any good. On Jin Langxin's advice, Lin Lijuan told her older brother, Lin Dikeng, to help her. Lin Dikeng of course was more than willing to do that. Gixio Xiao had just been put into jail, and he had just lent Gixing 2 million yuan to help Gixing's company stay afloat so he couldn't tolerate it that Gixing humiliated his family like that. Accordingly, this afternoon, the group of them went to Gixing's company together. Once Gixing and Liu Yuwei walked out, they ran ahead swearing at them. They weren't polite people at all. But rude and selfish. Jin Langxin caught Liu Yuwei at once so that Lin Lijuan could swear at her and slap her face as much as Lin Lijuan liked. You're such a beach. How dare you seduce my husband? How shameless you are that you gave him a blowjob right in the car. Jin Langxin didn't feel embarrassed at all but said it plainly. No one liked a mistress so nobody had sympathy for Liu Yuwei, especially when they heard that Liu Yuwei had given him the blowjob right in a car, they felt more disgusted. She's so shameless. Only a shameless woman is willing to be a married man's mistress. Exactly. The woman is the man's secretary. Really? Wow. It's office adultery. Hearing onlookers discussion, Lin Lijuan was extremely furious. She couldn't help thinking of the picture when Liu Yuwei had sex with her husband right in the office which motivated her to slap Liu Yuwei more heavily. Don't you enjoy giving blow jobs? How many men have you done that for? Have you had enough of it? If not, I can help you find a dozen men so that you can lick their sexual organs as much as you want. Lin Lijuan, enough. Although Gekinxian panicked a lot when the adultery was exposed, he was afraid that Lin Lijuan would attract more attention so he opened his mouth to stop her. What? You don't want to see your lover being slapped in public? Ha! Huh. It's not up to you right now. Lin Lijuan almost went crazy and slapped Liu Yuwei with full strength. Chapter 519 Leng Shouting's Call In the past, Gekinxian always used the excuse that he was tired to reject her every time she proposed to have sex. They only had sex once a week or two weeks and the Kingxian even seemed unwilling to do so. She used to think that he had to be tired because of work and she should be considerate. However, to her astonishment, he was tired because he already had enough with the other woman. Yu Gekinxian had no idea what to do now. Although Yu Yuwei was his lover he was just playing around, and it was impossible that he would divorce Lin Lijuan. Undoubtedly, Men tend to obey their sexual impulses and they were selfish too. Gekinxian was the one who had cheated on his partner and acted against the marriage law, but he still thought that it was acceptable because he was just playing around and wouldn't divorce Lin Lijuan. Marriage? In Gekinxian's eyes, Lin Lijuan only cared about her title as Mrs. Gu. However, she actually cared about his loyalty the most. Times were different now and it was completely unacceptable to cheat on one's partner in marriage. Gekinxian, how can you treat us like this? Your daughter was just put in jail and your company is amid crises now. I even lent you money to help you keep your company afloat. And now you have a mistress? How can you be so shameless? Lindy King criticized Gekinxian, although he wasn't loyal to his partner in marriage either. He had never kept a woman as a mistress. In addition, what Gekinxian had done broke Lin Lijuan's heart, especially after what had happened to their daughter, Gixio Xiao. It was also a humiliation to the Lin family, so Lin Dikeng was furious too. Gekinxian didn't say another word, but remained silent. He knew that it was his fault, but didn't think that it was a big deal. At the same time, he also understood that he better stay quiet now. Hearing what Lin Dikeng had just said, those onlookers started to criticize Gekinxian. Jesus. The man is so shameless. He's such a terrible man. I support his wife to undress the mistress. All of a sudden, someone said that among the group of onlookers, Lin Lijuan, on the other hand, thought that it was a good idea to humiliate Liu Yuwei so she went to undress Liu Yuwei at once. However, it was winter and it wasn't easy to take off winter clothes. Before Lin Lijuan succeeded, 
The police arrived and separated them. Liu Yuwei was badly injured, so the police called an ambulance and sent her to the hospital, while Lin Lijuan, Jin Langxin and Ge Qingxiang were taken to the police station. Ginning didn't know what would happen to them next, and she wasn't interested either. What Ge Qingxiang had done behind Lin Lijuan's back was finally exposed but it was too late when Lin Lijuan found it out. When Ginning got home, Ge King was chatting with Ge Man in the living room. So Ganing told them about what had happened between Ge Qingxian and Lin Lijuan. Both Ge King and Ge Man were quite surprised. Although they didn't get along with Lin Lijuan, and even hated her very much, they still had sympathy for her. Because what Ge Qingxian had done was totally unacceptable. Anyway, since they had decided to keep a distance away from Ge Qingxian's family, they wouldn't do anything but just took it as gossip. Mom? Aunt, why don't we go to City G tomorrow? Let's go to see the store and factory of Jade Beauty Jewelry. And we can visit Uncle Kain Yang too. We haven't ever visited them at their place before, Gunning said. Although tomorrow was Friday, Gunning had already asked for a leave, so she didn't need to attend classes. It had also been a long while since she had checked the store and factory of Jade Beauty Jewelry. Most importantly, she wanted to cheer Gu Man up. Gu Man wasn't in a good mood but she was interested in Ganing's proposal. She had nothing else to deal with now and it wasn't a bad idea to have a journey. Gu King was also excited, so both of them agreed. Ganing then booked plane tickets flying to City G at 8 am tomorrow. They would arrive in City G after an hour of flying. When Gu King went back to her home, she searched her closet for beautiful clothes. They would stay in City G for only two days. So there was no need to pack many clothes, but she still decided to wear her most beautiful dresses. What are you doing now? Jiang Zhu asked with curiosity. Ning Ning is taking Man and me to City G tomorrow. We'll have a tour at the store and factory of Jade Beauty Jewelry before we go to visit Kain Yang, Gu King said. Actually, she understood that Gu Ning did it for the purpose of cheering Gu Man up. Sounds great. Jiang Zhu said. Oh, how is Gu Man now? She seems worried. Jiang Zhu added. Ge King Sai then told Jiang Zhu everything. Jiang Zhu was very surprised after hearing the story. To his astonishment, Ganing's biological father was still alive. Wow, what twists of fate. Jiang Zhu said. He had deep sympathy for Gu Man because he also knew that Gu Man had lived a tough life during the past 18 years. She hadn't lived a good life for a long time and then Ganing's biological father suddenly appeared. Indeed. Ge King sighed and her heart ached for her younger sister, Guman. What do Guman and Ningning Ning think about it? Jiang Zhu asked. Guman still loves the man and Ningning Ning is supportive, but Mr. Tang is still unconscious now. We have to wait until he's awake, Gu King said. When it was almost 11 p.m., Gu Ning received Leng Shouting's call. He was about to have a few days off and he wanted to meet her. In fact, Leng Shouting planned to surprise Gu Ning. But he was afraid that she would be absent from City F like what had happened the last time, so he called her beforehand this time. Hearing that Leng Shouting would be free and wanted to meet her in a couple of days, Ganing would normally be happy but now she was upset. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I'm going to City G tomorrow along with my mother and aunt. Hearing that, Leng Shouting remained silent and felt upset too. He wanted to call her as early as he could but he had just finished his task. I miss you so much, and I ache to see you, Leng Shouting said. He didn't have many days off during a year after all. Chapter 520 Won't you feel lonely if you sleep alone? Ganing could feel his strong grievance through the phone and she was amused, but she immediately thought of a good idea. Why don't you go to City G? If you don't mind, you can be our private chauffeur in the following two days. Wherever we go, you can drive us there. No problem. Leng Shouting agreed with alacrity. He, of course wouldn't mind being their chauffeur. Although Ganing's mother and aunt would be the two and he couldn't kiss or touch her as he wanted, he could still stay near her. However, Leng Shouting wasn't satisfied, so he asked with anticipation, where will you be staying at night? It was a normal question, but Ganing understood Leng Shouting's real intention. Her heart beat fast and her cheeks flushed. Um, my mother and my aunt can stay in my apartment and I can stay in a hotel. Hearing that, Leng Shouting was excited. Very well. Then I'll stay in the hotel with you. Hearing that, a picture of them having sex at night appeared in Ganing's mind, and her heart beat faster. 
but she pretended to be calm. I didn't say that I'm going to sleep with you, baby, you know you want to. He laughed and flirted with her, which made Ganning's heart skip a beat. He was so sexy and charming that even his voice could easily turn her on. Leng Shouting was just used to being cold. If he smiled more, far more women would be attracted to him. Nonetheless, Gunning didn't want it to happen so she would rather see Leng Shouting being cold to everyone except her than see him smiling all day. If you don't sleep with me, then who will you sleep with? Leng Shouting teased. Gunning was surprised and took a long breath in. Since when has Leng Shouting become so good at flirting? She thought to herself, but she had to admit that she kind of liked it. I'll sleep alone, Gunning said on purpose. Won't you feel lonely if you sleep all alone for a long night? Leng Shouting smiled lightly but his voice was soaked with sexual desire. Gunning was struck dumb for a second. If she hadn't recognized Leng Shouting's voice, she would have taken him as another man. Shouting? She still called him with doubt. Yes. What's wrong? Leng Shouting asked. He thought that Gunning had something serious to talk to him about, so his voice went back to normal. Nothing. I just feel like you've changed a lot, Gunning said. Leng Shouting was struck dumb for a second now because he didn't notice any changes in himself. He just felt so comfortable and at ease when he got along with Gunning. My love for you will never change, Leng Shouting said gently. Gunning felt touched and flushed a little. Leng Shouting understood that Gunning was shy, so he stopped flirting with her. Besides, he could directly express his love to her with actions tomorrow night. When will you leave for City G tomorrow? Leng Shouting asked. 8 a.m., Gunning said. Great. I'll pick you up at the airport by then, Leng Shouting said. What? Gunning was surprised. It takes three hours of flying from the capital to City G. If you're going to pick us up at the airport, you can't have a good rest. Gunning didn't want Leng Shouting to be so tired because he had just finished his task. I want to meet you as soon as possible, and I can rest in the plane, Leng Shouting said. He couldn't wait a second longer to meet Gunning. All right. Since Leng Shouting said so, Gunning agreed because she also ached to see him. The two hung up later after talking for a short while. That night, Guman still couldn't fall asleep, but she was able to stay cheerful after drinking the water Gunning poured for her the next day. It was the first time that Guman and Guking had taken a plane, so both of them were quite nervous. Gunning bought the plane tickets for the first class so they could use the VIP lounge but Guman and Guking were curious about the airport terminals, so they waited there instead. It was still a dozen minutes away from the departure time, and they were sitting on the chairs outside of the gate. Man, are you nervous? I'm really nervous now. Guking asked Guman and her voice was trembling. Me too. Guman said, will the plane be stable if it flies so fast, and will it fall if it flies so high? The king asked with anxiety. Gee, two bumpkins. Hearing the talk between the king and Guman, a woman who sat nearby laughed at them. The king and Guman felt a little embarrassed, while Guning was slightly annoyed. Even if the king and Guman were bumpkins, Guning wouldn't tolerate it if anyone else dared make fun of them. However, she didn't want to make a mountain out of a molehill just because of that, so she stayed quiet for now. If the woman dared to do it again, she wouldn't be quiet anymore. Since the woman laughed at them, the king and Guman shut their mouths at once. Mom, aunt, it's not a big deal, and it's totally understandable that you're nervous when you are flying for the first time, Guning said to comfort them. The king and Guman gave her a smile to show that they didn't mind. Nevertheless, the woman opened her mouth again, a bunch of bumpkins. Shut up. Guning criticized her coldly turning to stare at the woman. Her look was very sharp, and the woman felt frightened. Jesus, this young girl is so frightening. The woman thought to herself then turned her gaze away from Gunning. Ning Ning, it's fine. Seeing that Gunning was getting mad, Guman and Guking comforted her in a hurry. They disliked the woman's behavior too, but didn't want to make a scene here. Since the woman was scared of her, Gunning didn't say another word. When it was the departure time, Everyone started to get aboard. The woman who had made fun of the king and the man got on the plane along with them. 